hey, we are coming to you from our own homes today, as most people are, and uh, excited to be part of Old York Cellars Virtual Spring Festival. I'm Robin Shreves, and I have with me Jen Hall and Tara Nern. We're going to introduce ourselves for a minute, and then we're going to talk to you about how you can support the local producers in the state, because right now it's really important. So, Jen? Hey, I am Jen Hall. I'm a food and culture writer based in Collingswood down in South Jersey. Um, I was actually born in North Jersey in Jersey City and made my way down the shore uh, from Jersey, brief detours in Memphis and in Florida. Um, when I write, I'm mostly interested in what people do and why they do it, what it means to them, uh, and really in sense of place, uh, which obviously for wine, that's a big thing. Um, so yeah, that's me. Okay, well thank you for joining us. Tara? Thank you. Thank you for having me, Robin. Um, I'm Tara Nuren. I've lived on the Camden waterfront for I think 17 years now. I am not a Jersey native. I grew up in Annapolis, Maryland with a lot of stops in between, um, chasing the dream of being a TV reporter. Uh, currently, I am a freelance writer like you and Jen are. Um, I'm a beer and spirits contributor to Forbes and I write about primarily beer and spirits, but also culinary travel, some wine, some food, et cetera, for publications like Food and Wine, Wine Enthusiast, and um, other local, regional, and uh, national publications. Yes. And I'm Robin Shreves. I'm a freelance uh, journalist. I have been writing about New Jersey wine for well over 10 years now. Um, I love it. It's my pet, what would I even call it, my pet passion is uh, <laughs> New Jersey wine, in particular East Coast wine also. So today, um, David from Old York has asked us to talk a little bit about his wines, but not just about his wines and not just about supporting Old York or even just supporting the wineries, but how we can support all the local producers from beverage producers to food producers to even perhaps restaurants who, that are local. Um, and all these places that we want to still be here once this pandemic is over and thrive once this pandemic is over. So the first thing is, um, Old York was kind enough to send us a couple bottles of wine. So uh, I have Old York's Syrah, which is a red. Jen, what did, what did you open? I opened the Vidal Blanc, which is a white. There you go. And Tara, what did you open? And as you saw, I also opened the Vidal Blanc, which is a white, and it, it's hitting really perfectly right now. <laughs> <laughs> as you see, I'm in the backyard, and it is exactly where I need it to be. <laughs> Jen, what do you think of the white, the Vidal Blanc? I love the, the pop of citru citrus. There's a brightness um, for me that really, I think, drinking it right now and having been in my home for... 43 days, I believe it is. Um, it reminds me of sunshine and of people uh, and of connecting and of getting together um, and of kind of all of my hopes for the future right now. So it's, it's a really beautiful thing to be drinking on this Saturday when the sun is out. Yes. So. <laughs> and just a note about the sun being out. We'd all hope to be outside in our yards uh, being able to do this. This is a spring festival. You know, everyone wants to see spring. But uh, considering that we kind of live in suburbia, there's a lot of lawn mowing going on right now outside. And so uh, Jen and I had to bring it in <laughs> to, so that you can hear us. Um, so I've got the Syrah. I'm actually drinking it out of an Old York Cellars glass that I uh, hunted down in my house. And this is just, oh, smells so good. And it's a lovely food wine. It's going to be getting uh, chillier again this week. This will be really nice on a chilly night um, paired with some beef or uh, even cheeses. Just, just really good. So cheers. And um, you know, I can I jump in for a second? What's that, Tara? I just asked if I could jump in while you were pausing yeah. for a second because when you were um, mentioning possible food pairings for your red, what just popped in my head as being a beautiful pairing for this um, Vidal Blanc would be prosciutto and cantaloupe. Ooh. Ooh. I think that would be perfect. And I'm trying to think of what kind of cheese, maybe some kind of like mild white 
crumbly white che- or creamy white cheese. I don't know. I'll think about that and get back uh, to yeah. you. I'm thinking parm. If, if you've got something that'll go with the prosciutto and the melon, then I think parm would probably give, be good that- too. Like a really good parm, <laughs> not just the, the grocery store parm. Right. Uh, You're I think it would pick the up the details of my community daytime outside wine drinking fantasy right now. So thank you. <laughs> Oh, here's to you, Jen. <laughs> Being I, got you. <laughs> um, I do think I'll just throw this in. That I, I'm getting a lot of melon on the nose and in mm-hmm. the flavor of this. And so I think that's informing a lot of where the cantaloupe and the prosciutto um, pairing comes in. Okay. Gotcha. As it should. If you get melon, you think melon. Like, mm-hmm. And that's, that's excellent. Um, <laughs> We're doing this on the fly. We don't have a second take, so we, I will stumble once in a while. Please forgive me. Looking at my notes here. Um, Sorry, I threw you off. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's all right. Uh, so Old York Cellars, I've um, known about them for eight, nine, ten years now. I have started my, I guess, professional relationship with them about five years ago. They were one of the really early adopters of virtual tastings. Five years ago, they were doing something called virtual vines online. They would ship out wines. They would have a live video with the winemaker and, you know, someone else. And then those of us participating, we couldn't, there was like this type of Zoom thing where everybody could talk together wasn't uh, available yet. We were talking on Twitter and asking questions to the winemaker on Twitter in live time and we'd get those answers. So that was my first introduction to virtual tastings. And Virtual tastings had this big boom about five years ago, and then they kind of, for local wineries, petered off a bit because local wineries started to get busy, and that's excellent, and so they didn't need these. And then suddenly, all of us, you know, everybody is doing virtual tastings because this is the only way for wineries to be in contact uh, intimately, yet distantly, with the people that uh, support them. and. This weekend, I love what Old York Cellars is doing with two full days of bringing you the producers, the musicians, the artists, everyone that would normally be at their spring festival. Um, But there are people outside of that who would be in that festival who need our support and not just the wineries. Um, I have been supporting local for about 12 years now purposely. I mean, I would support local before that just because in the summer you want the local corn or the local tomatoes because they're so good, but making an effort to support local producers, whether it's beverage producers or food producers. And for me, it started as something as uh, an environmental thing, Uh, keeping our open land, keeping Uh, things from being shipped all the way across the country just so I could eat something. So I was curious about, um, Jen, what brought you to, you know, supporting about local things, writing about local producers, and why is it important to you? It sort of happened in a few phases. Um, Growing up, I was in a very food-centric family. Um, We didn't necessarily have a ton of money when I was growing up, and my dad had a really big garden. Um, So in a sense, I was eating locally produced produce well before I even knew how to value it, Um, you know, grumbling about green peppers and whatever you do when you're a kid. Um, So fast forward, when I started writing, food was really a logical entry point for me. And one of my first big early pieces um, was a piece about oyster farming for Edible Jersey that really helped to open my eyes um, to the wealth of maritime culture in New Jersey, a bay culture, and then from there, um, branching out into farms and home kitchens and restaurants and elsewhere. Um, As I reported, it really started to change for me the decisions I was making in my own household, and it's kind of just evolved from there. Okay. Tara, how about you? Uh, I've always been quite counterculture. (laughs) <laughs> and, um, you know, as I was sort of tracing that back this morning and in thinking about what we were going to talk about today, uh, I have to give my parents, particularly my mom, a lot of credit. Um, like Jen said, it's always been part of her life. Well, growing up, um, my family used to travel a lot. We went to Puerto Rico every uh, Christmas time. We were fortunate enough to go to Europe a lot. And um, 
we were always eating. <laughs> um, but we would never go to like the tourist traps ever. And so now that's called culinary tourism and it's a huge catchphrase. But back in the 70s and the 80s, that term didn't exist. And my mom would obsess over local color, local color, local color. That's all she would ever talk about. And to her, that meant like, you know, going to a pub in Ireland or like <laughs> getting somebody to invite us into the goat farm, you know, cause we were little and she would use the excuse, Oh, can my kids see how you do this? Um, so I grew up doing a lot of that, just a lot of like very local eating, um, all over the world. And it stayed with me. I, if you see me eating in a chain restaurant, call the cops because somebody's abducted me. Um, and, um, you know, whenever I travel, I do eat local as much as possible. And especially now writing about beer, um, it's so much fun. Everywhere I go, I really enjoy tasting what's made there locally. Um, and it's a big part of what got me into writing about beer in the first place because all these craft breweries, well, it wasn't all these at the time, it was only a few here and there. The craft breweries were small, local, artisanal, independent, um, very community oriented and anti-corporate. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to highlight the good works they were doing and so here I am. Okay, so that brings up something really interesting is that when we travel or even when we're just at home and we want to support local, we just go. We go to the brewer, we go to the restaurant, we go to the farm, and that's the norm, but nothing's normal right now at all. And it might seem to some people that those things just aren't available to them. Maybe visiting, sitting at a table, staying there isn't available at the moment, but many of our local producers are available and they are uh, switching things up quickly as to how they can get their food to you. And, um, you know, Jen, you mentioned a little bit earlier about oysters being one of your first pieces and you have some information. We're all here in Camden County, the three of us near Philadelphia, probably thinking, well, we can't get any oysters, but we can, right? Mm -hmm. how, how, Absolutely. You know? Yeah, so the last few weeks I've been talking to farmers and producers um, about their experiences. And I think there's a few good reasons to find ways to support them. Obviously, we want those places to endure. Um, I think we also want to celebrate their resilience. The stories I've been hearing um, from breweries, from oyster farmers, from farmers, you name it, from restaurants. Um, have really emphasized the creativity, I think, that um, is central to our food scene in New Jersey and how lucky we are to have that. But also they're right in the center of this and really seeing and experiencing things in a really visceral way. So I think there's also like a human heartbeat reason to carve out a little budget, um, take some time to support them. So in terms of um, seafood specifically, 40 North Oyster Farms and Barnegat Oyster Collective. They're doing uh, Saturday oyster parties on Zoom and Facebook Live. It might also be on Instagram. So you can order your oysters and you might be thinking, well, I don't know how to open an oyster. I did not either. It takes me a while still, um, but they'll send you your oysters and oyster knife and then you can connect with them online on the weekend and kind of make it an event. Um, and then you have folks there who can kind of show you how to open an oyster. Um, which is a really great creative way, I think, not just to support a local producer, but to come together. Because even doing this, I think, when I'm, when I'm on Zoom with folks like you, it gives me a sense of normalcy um, that I really, really appreciate. Yeah, that's important. Okay. And I think that shucking oysters would be a really good stress reliever at the moment. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then you can throw the shells really hard against the side of your house. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then have more wine. <laughs> and then have more wine. <laughs> so um, you also have some information about, um, uh, what's the word? What am I looking for? Suppliers, not necessarily producers, yes. but distributors of yep. different foods that can bring uh, food to people. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, I think you'll talk a bit more a little later about farms and farmers markets and some of what's available there. But obviously we have some really interesting distributors in Jersey, like Zone 7, like Harvest Drop, that traditionally have spent a lot of their time um, 
serving retail and serving customers like us to an extent, but really working with chefs, um, working with schools, working with businesses that have closed. Um, so Zone 7 is partnering with Just Farmed, um, and they have a fresh box that they're delivering in Mercer, Hunterd, and in Bucks. Um, I checked in on it this morning. It is on a wait list, but they assure folks that wait lists are uh, opening up pretty quickly. So okay. it's definitely something to look at. Um, and then Harvest Drop, every Thursday morning at 8 a.m., if you set your alarm, um, they're all throughout New Jersey distributing all kinds of stuff uh, to your doorstep. Um, they've got produce from local farms. They've got um, meats from Pennsylvania, um, Tasso Farms Apiary. They have honey, um, all kinds of different interesting products. They have cheeses um, from, uh, sorry, <laughs> there's my moment of, oh, this is real time, from Cherry Grove. Um, Speaking of Cherry Grove, they are distributing to folks' doorsteps too. They're doing 30-minute um, radius curbside delivery for their customers. And even their head cheesemaker, Paul Lawler, is out there delivering um, food to folks. So I think it really says something about how the businesses are pivoting, um, both to keep themselves going, but really to meet a need that they're seeing out in the community. Okay. Do you know if Cherry Grove is um, shipping? They are shipping their cheeses um, and they're just getting into, I guess, like the next round of seasonal cheese making. But there are a few cheeses for shipping on their website now. And actually Harvest Drop um, has cheese from them as well. So if you're doing an order with Harvest Drop, I think it's like $150 minimum. Um, you can get some really beautiful cheeses, get some meats. And then, you know, some of these things are so hard to find if you're relying on our big box and internet friends. Um, right. So it's really nice to get that stuff locally, know where it's coming from um, and do something good for yourself and for the producers. Okay, so what I'm hearing is it is possible to get local produce, local cheese, local meat, um, local oysters. Yes. Um, if yeah, you and, know um, where to look for them. Other seafood as well. So um, Barnegat Oyster Collective is looking into a CSF Mm -hmm. going forward so keep watch for that community supported fishery like a csa um, but seafood and then also local 130 um, their uh, seafood distributor out in monmouth county they're shipping all over the state fresh caught local fish um, so they've got all kinds of things scallop season just opened april 1st so Jersey. really good stuff uh, that you can order and um, enjoy in your home while we await the future in which I'm drinking wine with people in the sunshine. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that wine would be so good with scallops. Mm. It would be so good with scallops. I'm sorry. I, I just made Tara cry. <laughs> I'm feeling that. <laughs> I was already missing crabs and oysters. <laughs> and Tara's going to talk a little bit about um, beer and spirits in the state. But before we move on to that, um, I just want to make clear that um, there are many more producers than what we're going to be able to speak about in this video throughout the state. Um, we did some, you know, we're talking about people that we might have interviewed before, have relationships with, um, and none of them are, except for the little bit of wine that the old York sent us, uh, nobody is paying us, giving us anything for this. We just have this heart for our local producers. Um, because we know who they are, we know how hard they work, and a little bit selfishly, like we want them still to be here because we want to be able to drink really good wine and with our oysters, like <laughs> years from now. Um, so Tara, what's going on with the beer and spirits producers? How are they connecting with their customers? What are they doing that's different? Yeah, um, such a good question. Let me, let me, paint a little picture before I go into what they're doing, if okay. I may. Um, there's this number that's going around the beer world uh, the past two weeks that is freaking everybody out. And that number is 46%. 46% of brewery, uh, craft breweries in the United States will not survive one to three months of social distancing measures. Now, I'm all for social distancing measures. It is what it is, 
but half of the breweries that exist in the country right now will not be around in three months because of this. Um, and, and we're talking about our, the local ones. We're not talking about the big breweries. We're talking about right. the ones that are in our towns, exactly. on our corners. Um, right. And the difference, a lot of, it's going to be mostly the small ones that mm -hmm. aren't going to be able to survive. The big ones are going to be okay. I mean, Budweiser's not going anywhere, <laughs> you know? Um, um, and Yingling, bless its heart, isn't going anywhere either. Um, it's the teeny ones that are in your neighborhood. Um, the people who study this are saying, yeah, it's the smallest breweries that are least likely to make it. Mm -hmm. And we've got 115 breweries in New Jersey, and I'd say about half of them are less than four years old, and mm -hmm. most of them are very, very small. So I say all that to say that it is absolutely more critical than ever to support local breweries because their very businesses are depending on it right now. And they like, like restaurants are doing everything they can to be able to sell curbside. Breweries in New Jersey are able to make deliveries. There was a little kind of hiccup with that a couple weeks ago, but they can deliver. Um, I can go into specifics now if you'd like. I looked up the breweries and alcohol producers, other alcohol producers in Hunterdon Hunter County, you know, which are relatively close to the winery, um, to take a look at what they're doing. And what I found out, let me check my notes here. Um, there is only one Hunterdon County brewery that's doing deliver, that's making deliveries. Mm -hmm. and that is um, Lone Eagle. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing daily takeout. And um, they're delivering four packs and crawlers and growlers. Um, and this is a model I hadn't seen before. They're breaking out zip codes. They're only delivering to, I don't know, let's say 10 zip codes. And depending on where, what your zip code is, you either need to make a minimum $25 purchase or a minimum $50 purchase. And if you do that, they'll deliver for free. You've okay. got to prepay and everything, um, but they'll do that. They'll show up at your house. Other breweries are... Um, canning and doing takeout. Um, that is the majority of them. Some of them have limited hours, so you'll want to check their websites first. Um, there is one brewery in the county that does not have a tasting room yet. Um, it's Opportunity. They don't have a tasting room, so you can't buy beer at their location, um, but they are selling cans um, at the local you know, liquor stores okay. in the area. So you can always go there. And what they're doing to kind of sweeten the deal is um, they've got two flagship beers. And if you buy one of those two flagship beers and you can go on the website to see what they are, they will make a $3 donation per every four pack or $20 per case to um, hospitality charities. So that's a lot. To donate $3 per four pack is a lot. So um, I was going to say, it's better if you can support the breweries by going directly to the brewery instead of necessarily at a liquor store because a lot of the breweries are so small, they mm -hmm. don't even package yet. Right. So you won't see them at the liquor store. And plus when they're at the liquor store, most of the time they've had to pay a, a wholesaler, a middleman in between. Mm -hmm. um, but in the case of opportunity, if you're you know, in the area and you see them at a liquor store, it'd, it'd be a great time to snap them up. Um, there are 40 breweries in New Jersey that are participating in a worldwide brewing collaboration um, called All Together. And you should start seeing those beers right, right around now. I know Carton's All Together version is out in the market already. Um, and the agreement is that if you're a brewery anywhere in the world and you want to participate in this All Together collaboration project, the brewery that organized it, which is um, Other Half in New York, asks that you donate at least half of the proceeds. Basically, they're donating all the proceeds. They want you to donate half to some sort of local um, charity for hospitality workers. And then they say you can keep the other half to um, basically help your own workers or you know, if you right. need it for your mortgage or your bills or something, you can use that too. Um, skipping real quick. There's one cidery, and um, if I'm going too long, you can tell me to be quiet. Yeah, but... we've only got maybe a few, 10 minutes left on our Zoom meeting, so. Okay, yeah. all right, real quick then. Um, Oldwick Cider Works um, is for sale daily at um, Oldwick's Farm Market. You can shop there because it's a farm market, it's open, or you can do curbside pickup. 
call ahead and then there's a five dollar processing fee and then skunk town distillery in flemington um you can call ahead for curbside pickup from them also and the last thing i, I do want to say is that if you can if you need to buy spirits and you can buy something made in New Jersey, that would be super helpful to them right now because they are not allowed to deliver and that's in opposition to other states, which can literally make you a cocktail and bring it to your house. <laughs> right. Got you. There you um, go. Great. I'm going to talk just a little bit about wineries and I had one cidery to mention and that's Ironbound, which is in Hunterton County also. Ironbound not only um, is selling its cider, it also has a, a farm right, a working farm right there and uh, a farm market. So while the farm market is closed itself, you can call ahead and you can not only uh, get their cider, which I absolutely love their cider, and you can get meat and you can get eggs, flowers, um, and uh, fresh produce from them. So that's another place, it's Ironbound Cidery. And then as far as the wineries go, I mean, you all are here watching today because you're a fan and a supporter of uh, Old York Cellars. So I know that if you're watching this, you like wine. We have about 54 wineries throughout the state of New Jersey. The majority of them, as far as I can tell, are at least shipping their wine still. Many of them are also doing curbside pickup and so many of them are doing these creative tastings. So there's various ones that are putting together um, whole boxes, like four different wines. You get the wines and then you get to join in with the winemaker on a Zoom usually uh, meeting where he talks about what he's made and you get to drink. And these are experiences that normally you wouldn't get to have under other circumstances. And while it's not ideal that you're not there in person, it's not ideal for any of us, you could get some wine education right now that you would not normally have while also supporting the wineries that really need your business right now. Um, so just summing up, there's a few uh, websites that I want to mention for those of you who are kind of searching. You all know how to do a Google search for different things that you want, but there's a few that uh, you might want to be paying attention to at the moment for announcements on places that are doing creative things. One is um, Edible Jersey website. All three of us have written for Edible Jersey before and it's a great source for local, pro, um, local producer all the time, specifically now, it's excellent. The Jersey Bites website is also a good source for information at the moment. And if you're in South Jersey, there's a Facebook page called South Jersey Food Scene. And the local restaurants and producers are able to put up there like, hey, this is what we're doing right now. I don't know if there's anything in North Jersey that's similar to that. Do either of you have a website for general knowledge that you can think of or did I hit on them all? Um, New Jersey Monthly is also on their table hopping blog, keeping okay. pretty good track of restaurants and what mm -hmm. they're doing. I know they're updating it um, pretty constantly, and there's also some other reporting from throughout the state, including up north. Um, so that's probably a good place to, to drop by. Okay. All right. Tara, can you think of anything? Uh, I can't think of anything offhand that is sort of tallying what breweries are doing what. Um, there probably is one and I'm going to get a, an angry text, <laughs> um, but, uh, I can tell you in general, um, the website, New Jersey craft beer, um, is the best resource for getting directly to all the alcoholic beverage producers in the state very quickly. That's the most comprehensive list and it's broken out by county. So if you're in Hunterdon County and you want to see, like go to each website for every brewery there, you can just click on them right from there. And it's pretty easy from there. Most sort of list what they're doing on there, right there. Okay. On there. And what you reminded me, I can't believe that I didn't think of it. The Garden State Wine Growers Association website uh, yeah. will have information also, and you can sign up to get an email and they send out an email weekly and it will have information about curbside pickups and uh, virtual tastings that the wineries submit if the wineries choose to submit it. Um, so thank you so much, ladies, for joining me today. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, David and all your sellers for giving us a platform to talk about these things that are very important to us and to all of us in the state of New Jersey. Okay, cheers. Cheers.
Thank you.